It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. This special interest, which is either a, a person's or a company's uh, personal benefit, or is it benefiting the country as a whole? And if it's deemed to be the special interest of the country, then what is the role of government? Now, I would argue then that everybody universally, I believe, would agree that the primary role of the federal government is national defense, you know, the common defense. Now, if you, if you follow me to that point, then the next step is, how does the country defend itself? Well, it certainly doesn't build airplanes out of soybeans. <laughs> you know, it doesn't. Uh, yes, we do need to eat, and there is an element of subsidy justification in the agricultural business so that we don't all starve to death, but where does that line stop and subsidizing exports begin? And that that gets into the realm of the, the role of government then being uh, assisting businesses, uh, agricultural business or uh, Kentucky Whiskey or Harley-Davidson. I don't believe that's the role of government to subsidize the export of those goods. Now, if it can and will in a passive way, absolutely. But as Americans, we got to where we are today by building things faster, better, than, and cheaper than anybody in the history of the world. You know, that's why we won World War II. Not because we had more people, it's because we had more engines. Yeah, and more airplanes and more ships. Yeah, we and we had and, we had a work ethic too that I think we're lacking today. Well, that that will rear its head as, as it needed. I, I do have full faith in the American people that when a crisis occurs, we can summon the strength to do these things. However, if our industry of aluminum production or steel production has been gutted and we no longer have the facilities that can operate at the capacity necessary or the technical ability to make these materials, we cannot defend the crops, the motorcycle plants, uh, the whiskey plants. Somebody is going to take that away from us if we don't have better ships and planes and guns. And and that, I would argue, was is the primary role of government. Now, now in that in that uh, arena, I do a lot of aerospace work, and I do some defense work. I have zero government contracts. <laughs> never had any. Never won any. Uh, because that, that doubles the price as soon as you start dealing with that kind of paper. Anyway, uh, there are still on the books specifications for certain parts that require that the materials to make that part have never been transported by sea. Now that is in specifications for parts today. So if I wanted to buy something that had a, a screw and I had to get it from Taiwan, it could not have traveled by sea to get to me per that specification. And that was because of the wartime 40s submarine warfare and, and the shipping. Well now what is different about that mentality than keeping a national defense industry expertise in this country. Mm. Yeah. Now, I can make that same argument for washers, dryers, and televisions, because if we don't make things anymore, our wealth is leaving. That's a good point. Yeah, if, you, if you're not able to make stuff, uh, and that has to do with you know access to resources, work ethic, that's where we get our prosperity from. And so I, that's an interesting argument uh, about it being about the national defense. Okay, so we're talking with Joe Maynard, uh, Arkansas uh, small business owner, conduit co-founder, uh, as well as you heard him say uh, he, his business is uh, in aerospace and uh, he does some defense work. Um, so when we report on these tariffs of 25% on steel, 10% on aluminum uh, from the European Union, Canada, Mexico, uh, and you look at kind of, like you said, where our manufacturing is now, uh, our ability to make stuff that we need versus where it was. Um, and then you look at what we've also done with China, 
uh, and, and that sort of thing, flooding the global market, as, as one report says, with these cut rate metals and dragging down the prices and things like that. Just generally, Joe, are you? do you think Donald Trump here is doing the right thing? There is no question about it. And, and I, I have some experience with that because of the prices uh, for especially the titaniums and the inconels, the, the high heat metals that are used in aerospace. It, it is difficult to find those materials. A lot of the materials come out of Russia. Uh, and, and I can tell you that if a country decides to subsidize their industries so that they can capture the market and run all the other countries out of that business, and they then they have a monopoly. And then at, the, at that point, if you want to buy a trigger for a nuclear weapon, let's say, and the only material is in China, I doubt you're going to get a deal on it yeah. or you're going to get it at all. And if you don't know how to make it because – all of your technology has been transferred to the other countries, the expertise, the experience, then you're going to be in a world of hurt, and no other product really can be looked at that way. And, and also, I mean, how would you know if the trigger would work? I mean, do we know that the steel from China and aluminum, I mean, is, is um, what we want to make our planes out of? I mean, do we, is there an inspection process? I mean, I would assume there is, but, I mean, I don't know that for sure. Do you know? Uh, there are there are ample safeguards in place, and there are uh, just like anything else. Uh, Japan in the the '60s uh, was a joke about making things because it was like cheap Japanese crap. But they stole. Uh, they I guess they utilized uh, our quality principles from a guy named Deming. Uh, they actually applied them where we laughed at the guy, and and they became the best quality producers of everything they produce in the world. Now, China is going to make that look like that's a neighborhood uh, a lemonade stand because they, they're, they're, they're going the same way. The, and I had run across some exotic aluminums that I can only find in Korea or Russia or somewhere else. Uh, a lot of times you're, you're only allowed to buy right now for defense or aerospace. You're only allowed to buy from certain mills you know, you've got to certify that this material came from this particular steel mill or aluminum foundry and and you can't use it if it's not and they have to then certify that the material was actually mined in the United States to make that steel so there are you know already some safeguards for national defense in place but none of that matters as i've said if you can't retain the knowledge, experience, and, and the supply chain to get this stuff through any foreseeable global event. And that's why it's distinctly different than everything else. You know, just because arguably a business has overbuilt, and rightly so, because it's a free market, uh, but rightly so, of overbuilt for exports, and then all of a sudden the opposing country then says, well, we're not going to take any more wine from the United States. Well, that is a, a, an economic problem for that particular interest, but that is a risk they took. Mm -hmm. And we can't, we, we can't be held hostage by maintaining our national defense posture and capability because somebody won't buy wine or soybeans or anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, we're, we're not – no one is guaranteed tomorrow. We don't know what the next day is going to bring. Um, this is kind of an issue that has divided, you know, some people on the right, some Republicans. Again, we're talking with Joe Maynard, uh, Conwood co-founder, Arkansas small business owner, deals in aerospace and steel and aluminum, knows what he's talking about. Uh, you got House Speaker Paul Ryan. Uh, he's criticizing this uh, Trump move. There are better ways to help American workers and consumers. Uh, he plans to work with the Trump administration on those better options. Uh, Nebraska Senator Ben Sass says that the tariffs are, quote, dumb. And uh, they are war warning that it harkens us back to the Great Depression, uh, saying we've been down this road before. What do you think about that? Is there a danger of going too far with this, or is it just a different world now than it was back then? Well, Paul, I think the, the principles remain the same. Now, I would expect, and I, I, I don't have it, in 
uh, easily recallable memory, but there were probably special interests involved in those 30s and 40s that got us into this uh, protectionism trade, but it wasn't, certainly wasn't national defense. And, and I think that uh, they're comparing two different things, and they forget both those people have forgotten what the primary role of government is. It is not to run the economy. They believe it is. It, it is not to protect workers. It is not to create jobs. It, it is to provide a free and fair arrangement in, in the economy to let the free market work. National defense is apart and separate from that. I see the point, yeah. So, so you're not necessarily saying because it's a global economy that we just want to focus on our national economy. You're just saying when it comes to, when it comes to being able to produce our own planes and our own uh, ways to protect ourselves, we've got to we got to take that more seriously. We need to be able to do that here in our country, not dependent on uh, you know China or whoever else wants to sell us their metals to you know to make our our planes that that protect us. Well, well, that's right. But by the fact that they are developing their industries, for example, the uh, missile guidance, uh, uh, rocket guidance systems, well, you know, it is my belief that Bill Clinton sold us out to Laurel Space uh, using Laurel Space and sold that guidance technology to China in the 80s. And look at their space program now. Yeah. It perhaps is going to get better than us. And I'll bet you that he didn't lose any money on that deal mm. no i bet you so, he didn't either yeah yeah and and uh and, and now we're, we're obviously giving our taxpayer money uh from our Ar kansans away to chinese companies to move here absolutely absolutely and and who benefits in the short term versus the long term you know the people that benefit are the special interest and their politician puppets and they're way long gone before the consequences are visited on the American people. Hmm. And I take that very seriously. Wow. And I would expect some in the Arkansas legislature would as well. Regardless of if you sell 50% of your soybeans to China, well, oh, well, you know, that was a risk you took to get into that market to build your business. If they're going to retaliate, what, you know, what can you do about it? It's a, it's a race to the subsidy bottom. Yeah. Well, and then there's also, you know, somebody was, I think we were talking with uh, somebody the other day, and they were saying, uh, I think it was Congressman Rick Crawford, he was saying, you know, as far as the farm subsidies go, you know, China desperately needs the, the farm subsidies. There's other countries that normally, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not the farm subsidies, but the soybeans, they desperately need the soybeans. And there's other countries that are supposed to be producing soy that are having bad years. And so, I mean, there's, they're going to have to buy, uh, you know, our soybeans, and right now there just might be a stare-down going on. Well, you know, weather, weather aside, which is a, not an insignificant factor for farming, uh, we've got the best, most productive farmers on the face of the earth. And if they, they need to be able to compete, but that's their business. To be able to provide for the needs of the United States, I don't have a, a problem discuss, uh, having a discussion about subsidizing that capacity but beyond that no so uh joe you mentioned uh you know this uh, back and forth earlier with uh, you know technology you know having to buy uh let's say a, you know a, a trigger or something from china let's talk about this theft of technology you also mentioned bill clinton selling our our, our missile technology over there uh is that a risk in all of this is it a risk that we're going to have some uh, you know intellectual property theft well i mean that that has happened in in spades uh, for the last 20 years, and, and not only have corporations had short-term vision on this because of short-term profits, you know, quarterly statements are what drive their success uh, in the short term. Uh, yeah, you, China will gladly make something for us very cheap if they can acquire the expertise to make it. And then once that expertise is acquired, then they have that, then they start the monopoly game of driving everybody else out of business, uh, so that they have a monopoly, and then the prices go to where the market will bear. It, it's very interesting about uh, the way uh, China is, approaches this. You know, they they feel like if if they have bought the the 
technology, so to speak, by offering labor and money to a American company, and then they they just add uh, labor value to it, and the, and then they they have their people that grow and understand, and, and I'm saying good for them. That's a great plan if you want to be the leader in industrial production in the on the globe. They're doing it the right way. You know, they have got a good long-term vision, and these are smart people. But they, they don't do the work of inventing and, and developing. They just bribe, in other words, for lack of a better word, they bribe well, yeah, uh, is government it, people and, and, and that what? Yeah, and isn't that what government does? It, it, let's just say in a nutshell here, okay, I'm going to make a comparison. We have government... Uh, and I've said this before, a lot of people that wind up in government, not all, but a lot of them, if they don't have jobs of their own, they can't create. And they end up being for big government because that supports themselves. And they end up wanting to take what others can create. And you have no better example of that than China. We need to remember, Joe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but China's a communist country. They don't really have private ownerships. At any moment, the government could come in and, you know, accuse them of party disloyalty. And so every every secret... Uh, you know, nothing remains secret. I mean, so the, the government is there to watch what all these companies are doing, what they're doing for American companies for real cheap, and then boom, like you said, they have the technology, and then, then they take that information that they didn't create themselves, and they try to, you know, uh, in, in, you know, we think in maybe five, ten years, these, I feel like China thinks in like hundred years, hundred year plans, you know, they are very intelligent when it comes to that aspect of plotting. Well, well they, they have a, a, a definite target industries that they target until they take them to a certain level that they can control them. Uh, timber industry, for example, you know, we, we can't make uh, hardwood floors in America when we have the trees to start with and compete with China, taking timber out of the country, processing it, sending it back in a package and selling it back to us. And, and they're making all the value add. Now, just because at this point they they are so adept at that that they can come back and get us to give them more of our taxpayer money to build a plant and create jobs, selling us our own hardwood back is just beyond my, I mean, it just blows me away. But when you look at how the money works and who the senators and representatives represent in Little Rock, you, you recall that that audio we have of uh, the whoever it was saying My the Chinese president. delegation, these yeah. are your representatives now. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a Freudian slip if I ever saw one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it sure is. Uh, well, okay, I think we'll uh, we'll wrap things up, but Joe, I, I'll give you the last word. I just want to reiterate, you know, you, you obviously uh, are somebody who's directly affected by this, and uh, I guess you have seen, um, you know, you've seen this slow... Uh, I guess, you know, devolving into where we are now. And now Trump is, it seems like President Trump is trying to correct uh, correct a wrong here, not just for you, but for a lot of people in your business. You know, and I, and I, I don't know the man, but I, by, by what I see, what the principles that he's applying and executing are exactly what this country needs. You know, the, the amount of industry that has left this country which does equal jobs, but that's not the point necessarily. But the amount of industry and expertise and facilities that have closed and left this country, and Obama was partially right. Uh, you know, those jobs are, are are not coming back according to that trajectory. Well, Donald Trump has changed the trajectory, and I can tell you that we need to, you know, quit worrying about the salamander and quit worrying about, uh, you know, minimum wages and let's get on with making this country great again. We were the best in the world at one point and we can be there again. The people have it in them. It's the government through its, uh, you know, objectors the, that are the big world order people. Why do they have a seat at the table? You know, they don't need a seat at our table. You know, Canada, EU, Mexico, they are interested in what's good for them. Believe me, they're not interested in what's good for us. This I can tell you. Joe Maynard, I appreciate it, sir. Let's do it again soon.
Okay, Paul. Anytime I can help. I'm here to help. Folks, we got to go to break back in a minute. 